battle in Husky Stadium, where tonight the homestanding Washington Huskies and quarterback Jake Locker try to right the ship and keep a bowl bid in their sights. Jaquiz Rogers and Oregon State provide the challenge tonight as they try and start conference play 3-0 for the first time in 42 years. The day began with college game day in Madison. Upsets across the college football landscape. And now we close it out with the Washington Huskies and 24th ranked Oregon State Beavers. College football prime time presented by Hampton Hotels from Husky Stadium. Oregon State off to a 2-0 start in the Pac-10, trying to go 3-0 for the first time since 1968. Washington in the middle of the Pac-10 pack. Welcome to Husky Stadium. I'm Carter Blackburn along with Oregon's winningest football coach Mike Bellotti and a man who needs no introduction around Husky Stadium, but we'll give him one anyway. One more all packed in quarterback here, Brock Heward. And speaking of standout quarterbacks for the Washington Huskies, so much expected of Jake Locker this year. Talk of a Heisman, talk of a high NFL pick. And yet the Huskies are a disappointing two and three so far this season. How much of that is on Jake Locker? When expectations aren't met, it's the head coach and the quarterback to take all of the blame and, and around here two and three not good enough in a year where the Huskies were expected to go to the Rose Bowl but I'll say one thing about Jake Locker he will not point fingers through all the ups and downs of five years in his career and here this season he's never blamed anybody else and that's why he's still the leader of this ship well Mike Jake Locker has dealt with a deep thigh bruise which the question now is how much does that affect Jake Locker's ability to run the football well he didn't get a chance to practice with the team officially until Thursday he was doing individual drills and held him up they want to make sure he got healthy but again with a reconfigured offensive line I'm not sure how much going to run him or design run plays for him tonight Oregon State has dominated this matchup of late four straight wins in the Huskies house now how much fight do the dogs have tonight The Rogers brothers, well known by most college football fans, and yet it's Jaquiz's first game without brother James Rogers, who went down last week with a season ending knee injury. Oregon State coach Mike Riley told us he's concerned and wants to see the response from Jaquiz, not only on the football field, but emotionally after seeing his brother go down for the season with that knee injury a week ago. Well, you know, Jaquiz is the heart and soul of this football team. His running really fuels that Oregon, the Oregon State offense. And the reality is he's faster this year. He's improved. He ran track or with, worked out with the track people in the spring, and it shows on the field. And 159 yards and two touchdowns against the Huskies last season in Corvallis. He wants to get this run game going, taking ownership of it this week, saying their run game has been horrible, and I would expect him to touch the ball, carrying the ball in the run game at least 20-plus times tonight. Steve Sarkeesian, second-year head coach of the University of Washington. Defense, big question mark for both the Huskies and the Oregon State Beavers. Although, keep in mind on all the Oregon State numbers, they went up against three top-10 teams already this year. Justin Cahoot's kick fielded by Jesse Callier. A 51-yard return a week ago for Callier and the true freshman across the 30-yard line. Washington Huskies will get the football first, which means we see Jake Locker, the senior from Ferndale, Washington. And Jake could have gone out last year. He was going to be a very high draft choice for the NFL. Chose to come back and represent his team and his state. And Jake and the Huskies have responded to adversity twice this season. The loss of BYU, you come back and blow out Syracuse. The loss and then the comeback win against USC after a debacle against Nebraska backs against the wall tonight. Chris Polk in the backfield. Play fake. Locker's first pass complete tonight. It's DeAndre Goodwin who has the first big pass play for the Huskies. And a good sign, Mike. We were wondering. We saw the University of Washington against USC, and this is where Jake was at his best that night in the Coliseum, was outside the pocket. Would that thigh bruise hinder him? Well, the first play of the game, he gets outside and throws a dart on the play-action pass. On the end around, this is Chris Polk, first carry 
goes for seven plus. And you see the first two plays of the game tonight, that fly sweep action. Oregon State is a team that likes to play a lot of quarters coverage. They get their safeties involved in the run game. Steve Sarkeesian felt this fly sweep could get the Huskies on the edge a step faster. Well, and what you hope, too, is that it opens up the inside seams for the running game by making the defense spread out. On second and 13, Polk out of the backfield. Mike's block on the edge, springs Polk for a Husky first down inside the 25. And I'll tell you what, the inside linebacker assumed to cover that swing pass, fell down, and again, created. you don't give Chris Polk that kind of room. You saw the fly sweep effective, so what does Oregon State and Mark Banker do? Well, we'll bring some outside pressure. Better call by Sarkeesian to get the block outside and get Polk into, onto the green grass where he is so successful. You give him space to run and he can make plays. Play fake, Locker to throw on first down. Now he's gonna tuck it. More room to run for Jake Locker. He goes scrambling for a pickup of about seven. We've talked about a lot of mobile quarterbacks, but Jake Locker is as dangerous as any. Again, on that type of situation, when it's a pass, an obvious pass, but the quarterback can break contain and run. And give some credit to the boundary corner here, Brandon Harden, 6'2", 215. That's not an easy play right there. He squares up, his shoulders stay square. Doesn't give in Jake any right or left. He makes a very solid tackle into the boundary. Already 20 rushing yards for Locker. He had only six a week ago in the loss to Arizona State. Chris Polk picks up another University of Washington first down. The Huskies moving the football in the ground game. One of the complaints around the community is at five and a half yards to carry, why not more Chris Polk? And Steve Sarkeesian, Doug Nussmeyer said to us yesterday, hey, listen, we've dialed up a lot of zone read. The opportunity for him to get a ton of carries, but the defense has taken him away. More designed runs, the toss sweep, the inside zone. Expect to see that tonight for Chris Polk. Those are what we call hard calls. You're determining as an offense now who carries the ball and not letting the defense determine your fate. First time in the red zone, Huskies turned it over on a locker fumble. Back inside the Beaver 20. Locker on the roll to the end zone. Oh! For a Washington touchdown. Jermaine Curse, eight drops this season. I had the sense down at pregame. I purposely went down there to watch his body language. He's been lethargic, a bit lackadaisical the last two weeks. I sensed a different hunger out of him tonight, knowing he was going to get exactly that man-on-man -man coverage and that he had to show himself tonight. Well, that's how you gain the trust right back in your quarterback. And great patience by Jake Locker to wait on that. James Dockery had pretty good coverage. He's their cover guy. And for Curse, that's a big statement coming out early. Washington coach Steve Sarkeesian told us yesterday, I don't know what you'll see from my football team, but I promise you, we'll fight. Jake Locker's offensive coordinator, Doug Nussmeyer, said he's like a rock through all the criticism, through the disappointing start to the season. Nothing seems to affect it. First Washington possession, a fumble, he comes back, leads a touchdown drive. You want to play that position at the NFL level, you better have a short memory. Six for eight, 87 yards passing and a touchdown for Jake Locker. Bolts kickoff fielded from the 10. Hoyer no, returns it to near the third. You saw Washington fumble on the opening drive. That is something Jaquiz Rogers has never done while running the football. One career fumble, and that was on a swing pass. So the big little man for the Oregon State Beavers in the backfield as Oregon State gets a football for the first time. The quiz Rogers with a gain of a couple. Pretty impressive film last week for the Pac-10 Player of the Week and just his fifth start was lights out against Arizona. And Mike, I think the biggest surprise watching film was how fast he played, the level of anticipation for such a young starting quarterback. And Mike Riley says he has one of the strongest armies he's ever coached. A great release, and he has really improved his accuracy over the past couple of games. 
Ryan catched the throw on second and eight. Caught for a Beaver first down across the 40. That's Aaron Nichols, the senior former walk-on from Honolulu. And when you put the game film on, it illustrates it so beautifully. The, the, the game film at the college and pro level always has a shot from above in the end zone. That end zone shot, you can see exactly what a quarterback's thinking, how quickly he processes information. I said Cats played fast last week. That's an illustration. That ball is out of his hand just as the receiver comes out of his break. Jaquiz Rogers stood up and dropped at the line of scrimmage. It's Desmond True Font leading the way along with Victor Ayewa. Take a look at our impact players when the Beavers have the football. And it all starts with Quiz Rogers. I said before, he's the heart and soul of this offense. He's also a great blocker and a great receiver out of the backfield, as you just saw. After that, Joe Halahuni for them is the leading receiver, most touchdown receptions. Tonight he's going to play H back and tight end. And defensively for Washington, really their only playmaker this season, leading the Pac-10 in tackles. You'll see number 40, Mason Foster, sideline to sideline. Cats on second and 11, nearly, and it is intercepted. Off the hands of Iowa into Desmond Trufant's hands. Just the second turnover of the season by Oregon State. And that's the classic tip drill that you practice every day on defense is the tip ball down the field and rallying to that ball. Don't let it hit the ground. And Mason Foster has made all the tackles, but I tell you, Victor Ayewa, converted safety, is starting to get the feel of that strong side linebacker position. Being a converted safety, you'd expect him to know coverage and be comfortable. That time he gets enough underneath that route to tip the ball for the interception. And turnovers are very important, but you've got to convert the turnovers to points. Just the third interception from the Washington defense this year. Locker to throw off the play fake on first down to a wide open Jermaine Curse. Tell you who makes that play. You're enamored. You have been from day one with Jesse Callier. Did you see him pick up that blitz? He wouldn't be playing if he couldn't pick up the blitz. The other thing, I'll tell you what, they like the matchup of Jermaine Curse on Dockery. Right now, Curse is winning that battle. And Dockery, a captain, a senior, has played a ton of ball in Corvallis, and this is their identity defensively. They're going to play man on man, very aggressive, press outside, and Curse is going to be battling with Dockery most of the night. Timeout. University of Washington, timeout number two. 30 second timeout. The Huskies were lined up wrong, so a second timeout, Washington offensively in the first quarter. Our All State Good Hands play comes early from Jermaine Curse, who had so many drops last week, a touchdown to start this week. And you talked about patience. This is a comeback deep down the field off of that fly sweep play action. Watch when Jake Locker throws this pass. I say trust because he is not out of his break. Jermaine Curse with Dockery is not out of his break. He's right there at the mess point when Locker releases and lets go of that pass. Notice, too, that he looked back over his inside shoulder and then did the swim technique to separate from the corner. Could be the All-State good hands fighting play of the game. Play action on first down. Locker to throw incomplete. Here's a flag in the backfield. Intended for Callier. One thing that Jake still has to learn is he can't throw everything hard. He had to put touch on that ball, although he did get hit as he released it. Roughing the passer. This is now our seventh stadium and game we have done this year. We've done some pretty high profile games. By far the most pro scouts out here tonight. A half dozen or more teams. Stephen Kaya. Roughing the passer on the defense, number 96. Penalties and fourth half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Stephen Kaya, a top prospect. And yeah, and that's way late. The ball is gone already. There's no need for that. And Locker may be struggling this season, but these pro scouts, trust me, are taking notice of his play. 
from inside the 15. Callier picks up a couple. You know, he said a couple times Locker fumbled it the first time down. He ran into a teammate, DeAndre Goodwin. That was what caused the fumble. But again, the response, a touchdown, and now into the red zone again. What is it about Callier you like so much? I just think he's a complete player. He can run the fly sweep. He can run the power up inside. He can pick up the blitz and block. And he's also a great receiver out of the back. How unique for a true freshman to handle that load as well. Out of Downey, California, Warren High School. Of the state of California in rushing last year. There's the fly sweep. There's Callier turning the corner. Near another Husky first down. Tell you what, that was great pursuit. I thought he had a chance to score the safeties for Oregon State. Made that play to keep him out of the end zone. Now you're a guy, it's pretty remarkable for the success this season in some of the big plays. And a guy that ran 43 touchdowns as a high school senior, he's yet to taste a touchdown at the collegiate level. Washington, the first Pac 10 school to offer him a scholarship. Third and two. Hope for a Husky first down inside the Beaver Five. And you see Polk and Callier, they're in the same backfield. I was waiting for the belly or the belly toss, which is what they fake. Good power running up inside down there, inside the five-yard line. We have seen a much more physical presence. Everyone, I think, was wondering about Oregon State. These rankings defensively, 176 yards a game, 88th in America. Is that because of TCU and Boise State and Arizona, or do they have limitations up front? I think through this first quarter anyway, UW is having their way at the line of scrimmage. On first and goal, Locker handles the snap, hold no gain. What could be the last play of the first quarter. And again, I think the the grade so far for the revamped reconstituted offensive line has to be A or B because they're getting pushed off the ball when you have four new guys playing different positions. That's an amazing opportunity for success into the first quarter before the Huskies get this one off a touchdown advantage for Locker and you Brock when you said no hats and earmuffs and scarves. Was this kind of what you had in mind? Yeah, we're Preventing not doing that. this. That's yeah. not going to ever happen yeah, in I the mean, booth. I mean, the, the, anywhere. The Husky here said none of that allowed, even on a fall night game at Husky Stadium. I left my Husky hat at home. <laughs> <laughs> in the fireplace. On second and goal, locker to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. DeAndre Goodwin with his second touchdown of his senior year. It's the same exact play they ran a week ago on a fourth and two situation against Arizona State. You have all that fly sweep action. Look at the eyes looking in at the backfield. And when you give green grass with no safeties there and Goodwin all that room to roam, that's a pre pretty easy throw for a quarterback to execute. A lot of mileage out of the fly sweep fake. And again, Jake Locker buying time for the guy to come open. They're doing a great job. The one thing I don't like, they've already burned timeouts, two of them, in the first quarter. Two point after touchdowns for the Washington Huskies. Two touchdown passes for Jake Locker and a 14-0 start for Washington. Jordan Boyer feels that. Near the 12 and now cuts it back. He has room to run. Boyer lowers the shoulder pads across the 40. Nate Williams finally makes the stop. Play fake. Cats press it. Tucks and scrambles for an Oregon State first down. Big hit by Iowa after the first down run from Ryan Katz. Something that the Beavers have not had in their offense. A quarterback who can tuck it and run. And he has he has positive yardage this year so far. And I believe he'll end the season with it. The first time for a Beaver quarterback in quite a while. Look at Jaquiz Rogers right there on Mason Foster, the leading tackler in the Pac-10. And what an X factor. As Carter said, Oregon State not known for running quarterbacks. Big third down conversion. Had a number of those a week ago down in Arizona. First time in 13 years they've had a quarterback at this point in positive rushing yards. Rodgers dropped by Victor Ayewa, who 
is making the plays today from his strong side linebacker spot for the Huskies. Well, we Washington. talked about Ryan Katz there, 110 rush yards this season. I don't think he quite has that many. We should check that. Oh, you know, the NCAA, they just yeah. subtract all those sacks. Just not fair to the quarterbacks. <laughs> all those rushing yards taken away for sacks. Katz on second down, takes the hit. Completes the pass anyway to Leah Crichton drills Katz as he releases the football great patience You know Brock you talked about Mike Riley and his concern about quiz and his brother being up It wasn't just about quiz It was about the entire Beaver team because you know once they played without James Rogers before but now he is definitely out for the rest of this season They are on their own up with another stop it's Williams in coverage on Bishop a little collision in the route that time and again as you see this right here boom gets bumped they could have called that but the pass may have been uncatchable well I think any time contact down the field very surprised on a third down to not see that contact well before the pass came to the receiver 42 yards the first time he punted. Now Cody Bruns back to return to the Huskies. Good bounce for the Beavers. They down it inside the 10. The Huskies bring in the fight and the fight early. Both more positive yards in the ground game on first down. It's, it's interesting to watch this because Washington has taken a page out of the Oregon State offensive playbook. They're running the fly sweep almost every single play to create the edge pressure for the defense, but it's opening up the inside seams. That, you, you also Paya see them doing yeah, a great up. job on Paya. Again, he has had difficulty getting off the blocks. He's getting chipped or double teamed or single blocked effectively. It's a guy that Steve Sarkeesian said destroyed them last year, disrupting. Thing they wanted to do that pass was tipped and incomplete and you alluded to some of the touch a little bit earlier and when you're throwing especially to those backs Jermaine Kirst your receivers they can live with that but a freshman back and there's a critical third down conversion last week against Arizona State it was a dart a little bit behind Cali with those backs you'd like to see just a little bit more finesse Cameron Collins tips that pass incomplete forcing third and three Fake the toss, locker on the roll, first down, but it may be coming back. There's a flag on the play. Somebody got tackled there. <laughs> that was a holding penalty, obviously. And again, it's against the defense because they didn't let the back get out. Explain that a little bit. Well, they have to allow, if you hold a receiver, that's holding. And again, if he's at the line of scrimmage or past it, you cannot hold. Holding. On the defense, 10-yard penalty headed on to the end of the run, first down. Actually, a pretty smart play by Gabe Miller because if he doesn't do that, then he's got to make a choice between tackling, tackling Jake or letting the bat get downfield. He also wipes out his own pursuit. Everyone was wondering, Jake Locker, as he alluded to in our open coach, did not take any of the team reps Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, took some of them on Thursday. That thigh bruise and the bleeding in that thigh slowly getting better throughout the week been effective outside the pocket with his legs tonight. Sarkeesian and Doug Nussmeyer still calling those design runs for Locker. Yeah! On play action. The pocket breaks down. Incomplete pass intended for Polk. Had a chance for a big play and again Jake a little bit off balance but gave the guy a chance to catch it. It's just hard when you don't expect the ball. You're watching the quarterback run. And your eyes sort of drift sometimes. And better push by Oregon State. 
There was a throw earlier in the game. I said it's not always about the sacks and the hits. When you make those quarterbacks move and they can't find a safe spot in the pocket, it gives your defense, especially like that case where you just rush for, gives them a chance on the back end. And that's the new Jake Locker. I would have liked to have seen him run the ball in the past. I think he's more dangerous in that way. Play action on second down. Locker rolling outside the pocket, flinging downfield complete for DeAndre Goodwin. He is really at his best when he runs to his left. It's rather remarkable. He is a talented athlete that's not easy to do. There are many quarterbacks in America at the collegiate level. When you're on a full sprint to your left, but the technique, you see him square his shoulders so beautifully, and by fundamentally being correct in the athleticism to boot, he can throw accurately running to his left. And Washington continuing to pick on the best cover corner, James Dockery for Oregon State. Huskies back into Beaver territory at the 45. Fake the fly sweep. Locker down the seam. Caught. Touchdown. Jermaine Kerr's second touchdown grab of the day. Oregon State has made a living playing man-to-man -man coverage and bringing pressure. Tonight they're getting beat because of that man-to-man -man coverage. And probably the best throw of the season for Jake Locker. Moving in the pocket, the play-action pass and the seed 55 yards down the field. Now you see why the expectations were so high for the Washington Huskies in 2010. This is the Jake Locker and the UW Huskies they expected. Both kicks off after the third touchdown pass by Jake Locker. Jordan Boyer with another solid return to near the 40 for Oregon State. Kick coverage an issue all year for Washington. Katz handles it on first down, looking long for Wheaton. Off his hands, incomplete. Marcus Wheaton was behind the defense. And again, they were hoping Marcus Wheaton would take up the slack for the loss of James Rogers. He actually has better yards per carry, better yards per touch and reception, and a longer punt return. But here, this could have been a turning point for the Beavers. Unfortunately, no catch. And once again, I love the call. You talked about momentum. How do you change momentum? Well, you can do it with a big play and a beautiful throw by Katz. Wheaton's got to find a way to bring that in. In Wheaton's defense, he did have a sore knee and missed some practice time this week. Catch to throw on second down. Has to release it because of pressure coming. Bishop makes a nice grab. The sophomore from West Salem, Oregon. All-America high jumper in track. How much, Coach, and, and you called a lot of plays for many years besides being a head coach, do you fight right now as a coordinator down 21 to not be patient and continue to utilize Quiz Rogers as well? You're right. You have to be patient. That's one of the things that Oregon State talked about. They've got to be patient with the running game, but they do need first downs, and right now they need to keep the ball away from the Husky offense. This is third and one. Rogers. Fighting. He appears to have the first down on the right side, running behind the tackle, Mike Rimmers. And Will Darkens, the fullback, clearing the way. That, that shows you exactly what the defense deals with when you try to find Jaquiz Rogers on third and one. You literally can't even see him. You can't. Him. I swear he hides behind and underneath runs under armpits of defensive players. <laughs> Play fake. Cats outside the pocket on the run. Incomplete. Off the hands of Wheaton again. I'll tell you what, Ryan Katz could run, though. He got outside contained. The Huskies had the leverage on him. He outran them to the sideline. Actually threw a great pass on the run. 
Got to make that catch. You talked about the swelling on the knee this week. No reps for Wheaton. They didn't know whether he could go tonight. And right now, these two plays, very, very rusty. You know, he made those catches last week, though. Had seven catches for 113 yards in the game. And look at Mike Riley encouraging him. That's Mike Riley. In, in, in perfect essence as a coach, never panicking, but strong encouragement to catch the ball. Catch complete to the sideline. Near another Beaver first down. Back and forth. We'll keep an eye on that one on the bottom line. Sports Center is next. Jaquiz Rogers picks up another Oregon State first down. Hallahooney frees Quiz Rogers. Wow. Pretty good feed, huh, coach? Yeah. Yeah, two lateral steps there, go one direction, shift, and go the other, and then get north and south. You know, he's, he is a very tough back to contain. That's why they love him, too. He is the heart, so we talked about it. It makes this offense go. I saw the pro scouts down on the field before the game. He may be five foot six, but every pro personnel guy will tell you how powerful. Look at the lower half, the calves, thighs, the hamstring, very powerful in the legs. Rodgers right through the middle again for a Beaver first down. Talked about the size, Brock. In, in the age now of Ray Rice, Maurice Jones, Drew, does it matter for the future for Jaquiz Rodgers that he's 5'6", five, 5'7"? Five, well, I think in this day and age in the NFL where it's running back by committee, where you don't need that workhorse at 220 pounds, where so many teams utilize running back to different skill sets, there will be a place for him in the NFL, no doubt about it. And I like the patience. We talked about that earlier. Back-to-back -back plays feed the workhorse. Quiz Rogers again on first down. Bouncing away from the Husky defense to pick up more positive yards to the five. You know, and again, kudos to the Oregon State offensive line because both Johnson and Linnicall were beat up this week and did not practice a lot themselves. So, again, they're doing the job up front to allow Quiz to do his thing. Just look at the feet like a, like a tap dancer. And that's a free safety, the third leading tackler in the Pac-10, Nate Williams, that he runs right through quick. You, you, you will during the course of the game run out of adjectives to describe his lateral movements and how talented he is. You see the first down line at the one. Katz will tuck it. Scramble for an Oregon State touchdown. And give Joe Halahuni credit here. He sustains the block down the field. Once again, Katz's elusiveness and his speed makes a difference on the field. With everything that Oregon State has been through this season and the road they've been on, you knew they were going to respond to adversity. Again, you talk about the feet of Jaquiz Rogers. Well, Ryan Katz showed last week, really impressed his coaching staff with his playmaking ability and his athleticism. They're a great example of it as he Scores a touchdown for the Beavers. Justin Cahu missed two PATs last week. This one is good. A catch touchdown run. Beavers on the board. So, Oregon should be the number one team in the AP poll. The question is whether Oregon is the number one team in the BCS tomorrow night. First BCS standings reveal. Callier returns this to near the 35. Let's take a look at our Chick-fil-A drive recap from Oregon State's first scoring drive of the game. Overcoming early drops within that drive. And you see Jaquiz Rogers start to get it going. Carries three times for 34 yards. He's breaking tackles. The quick feet. You've got to get a lot of Huskies around the football. One guy will not bring him down. That is not a good enough. A lot of gold helmets. They've got to be flying around and give Katz some credit. Some may argue arm strength, Derek Anderson, Matt Moore, some talented guys throwing it, but I guarantee you over the last 15 years, he's the most athletic quarterback they've had. Holt loses a couple on the first down carry for Washington. And I will second your opinion about Quiz playing at the next level. There's no question in my mind he will play in the NFL. Yeah, 
that's not a good sign as you see Chris Polk and he's had a bit of an ankle this season that's limits some of his work and otherwise and he hobbles to the sideline that means more workload for Callier. Quick drop on second down slant incomplete over the hands of Goodwin. Interesting by the defense that time their defensive tackles and defensive ends were way outside. They were daring them to run up the middle in that situation. You took a look at the very wide splits. Those are even beyond three techniques outside the guards three techniques. Very very wide splits. I wonder if that's their response to so much of that fly sweep. So third and 18 lockers pass is intercepted. Jordan Poyer with his first career interception. Jordan Poyer has tremendous football instincts and again he plays corner returns kicks he's a quarterback in high school but he's just so instinctive to get to that football to read the receivers route and beat it back to the ball when you're throwing into the boundary as Locker did there you cannot afford to be late on a comeback it's one thing on a sprint out in the red zone everything in front of you it's quite another when you're throwing to that short boundary you throw that a little bit late and Poyer a tremendous break and the momentum and the noise of the crowd go hand in hand. Two Washington turnovers, a locker fumble, and now a locker interception. Play fake. Cats screen to Rodgers. Flag on the play. Mike, what did you say about momentum and those Oregon State? It's almost like you have a, a, a familiarity with the way that the Oregon State Beavers can fight back. Well, it's, it's also just college football. Again, I, I think young men tend to get either too excited or too down. That's a 15-yarder against the Huskies. And again, a great play, a great hustle by the defensive lineman to get out there and catch Squiz in the open field. You can see it right here, the screen. And again, Cameron Ellis, no, excuse me, that's Tom Amu. And again, right there, no question about how he got him down. That's 330 pounds. You love the effort from your D tackle. You see those linemen get out, you follow them, you chase it down. And a little five foot seven running back, you gotta do the best you can to avoid that headgear. And Oregon State has flipped the momentum of this game tonight. A dominant 21 0 start for the Huskies. But the Beavers fight back. Rodgers right through the middle of the Washington defense for a gain of eight. That's one of the first fly sweep actions we've seen from the Beavers. And remember James, Rod James Rodgers is out for the season. Marcus Wheaton will be their fly sweep action. The Huskies have had success with it in the first half and that time some of that action slows down those safeties and quiz all he needs is a crack and he's going to get you six seven yards. Older brother James on the sideline out for the year torn ligaments in his left knee in the second quarter of last week's game at Arizona. Quiz falls forward again. That's a 6 1 219 pound linebacker Victor Ayewa taking on a 5 7 running back and Rogers wins the battle. Again I, I'll tell you what I think that's a great tackle in the open field to get quiz down one on one is really difficult does a great job of stopping him. He does fall forward because quiz can move the pile. Touchdown last time that Oregon State had the football once again inside the Washington 10. Rodgers. Shoved out minimal gain. You just hold your breath don't you you're ready to say Rodgers Rodgers he's just never down. They couldn't get him down. They had to push him out of bounds again. You have to get to his legs and it's hard to get to his legs because of that low center gravity and he's built so low to the ground. Nice to see better movement out of Tom tonight. I thought some of the film that we watched yesterday you didn't see some of the burst and the acceleration. You saw the screen that time running laterally well down the line of scrimmage. Good sign that he's active tonight. Rodgers cut back touchdown Oregon State and Jaquiz Rodgers does some barking of his own 
he was just too quick for the entire Husky defense on this play. And everybody gets going one direction, he cuts back, and again, you can watch just the inability to tackle him in space. And that's an unblocked defender. That's Victor Ayewa on the backside. Your job, don't lose contain on that backside. You lose him. At his size, within that pile, you must be so disciplined. And Victor Ayewa, one step, and you're beaten. But it's the threat of the inside zone that makes them peek inside and want to stop the inside play. And they don't they don't understand how quick quiz can be to change direction. Well, University of Washington 21 nothing lead. And yet, as Mike predicted, Oregon State fighting back to make this a touchdown game at the half. The tail of two quarters. And you saw Washington come out fast. Oregon State responds. And Jaquiz Rogers really got it going in the second quarter. Now we send you to the studio for the Wendy's halftime report. Welcome back to College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels late night from Husky Stadium in Seattle. I'm Carter Blackburn with former Oregon head coach Mike Bellotti and former Washington quarterback Brock Heward and on a day full of upsets in college football another top 25 team in trouble and it was 24th ranked Oregon State getting in an early hole 21 nothing but Mike those Beavers can fight back on you. They can, but the first quarter was all Washington. It was the Jake Locker to Jermaine Kerr show with a little bit of Chris Polk thrown in for good measure. But the reality was that Jake was on fire, got outside the pocket where he's best, and completed key passes. And give Oregon State credit. They did not panic. They went right to their workhorse to quiz 14 carries in the first half. And you're going to see more and more of him in the second half until the Huskies can stop him. Oregon State will get the football first. In the second half, Boyer across the 20 to near the 25. First and 10 for Oregon State from the 24. Play fake to Rodgers on first down. Cats complete. Aaron Nichols all the way into Husky territory on the first play from scrimmage of the third quarter. So look at the difference between the first 20 minutes of the first half and the last 10 minutes. I mean, almost completely opposite. And at 21-0, it was really Ryan Katz's legs on a couple third down conversions that breathe some life into this offense. And then when you can run it, it sets up all your play action passes you saw right out of the tunnel. Wheaton on first down, room to run, shoved out near the 35. Again. Oregon State caught Washington there with nobody on the slot receiver. They covered the outside guy. The safety was off 15 yards. That's an easy throw and catch for a key first. One of the things, too, is Oregon State, as we talked about, too, they're looking for Marcus Wheaton to step up and replace James Rogers. He's certainly trying to do it despite missing to practice time this week. James Rogers out for the year with torn ligaments in his left knee, expected to gain a medical red shirt and come back for another year with the Beavers. Cats trying to set up the screen. It's Halahuni, the H-back slash tight end near the original line of scrimmage. Mason Foster, who is averaging 12 tackles a game for University of Washington, and makes a stop. You know, one of the things, too, that Washington defensive coaches told us is when Oregon State gets in a 21 personnel, two backs in a tight end, they rarely run the football. They use it for their gadget plays and their play action, which we've seen tonight. Here's exactly that personnel, the fullback, the two backs, and the one tight end. This time they run it right up the gut. Rodgers tackled by Foster again, but not before he picks up six yards. You know, the draw play, which every coach has some of that in his arsenal because you want to use the defensive aggressiveness, get them in their pass rush lanes, have them come up the field, and then give the ball late, the late draw up the middle. And watch Katz keep the play alive. He's been so brilliant on third down the last two games. Pressure. Katz releases early. But it's caught by guess who? Jaquiz Rogers on the wheel out of the backfield. And Rogers showing the versatility of his game. Washington's going to bring a blitz. You got locked in player on player, mano a mano. That's Mason Foster, your best defensive player. Can't keep up with Quiz on the wheel. And Oregon State loves to go three by two and get put Quiz into the short side and get him covered by a linebacker. Brock, you, you said it. Great throw and great execution. First and goal. 
Rodgers inside the five. I really liked what Nick Holt had to say about Oregon State's group up front. All of this conversation with Rodgers, and he deserves so much of the credit, but Nick Holt used a term I have not heard in college football. He called this Oregon State offensive line sticky, and I think that is the perfect adjective. Do they blow you off the ball? Are they the most incredible, talented, powerful group? No, but they get a body on a body and allow Rodgers just a little room to run. Rodgers on second down. Room to run again. Touchdown, Oregon State. And the Beavers are a PAT away from tying this after Washington had a 21-0 lead. And sticky does mean that they stay on their blocks. And that's an offensive line with three walk-ons or former walk-ons. And that's Grant Johnson, your left guard. You see the ankle tape missed most of this week with practice. The center. Lennon Cole, he was beat up this week, an undersized group that knows nothing but to scrap and to claw and to fight, and they know they've got a back that can get them those big yards. K Hoots PAT barely sneaks in, even at 21. 21 straight from Washington to start. 21 straight from the Beavers to start. Pac-10 Commissioner Larry Scott joins us next to answer some questions about the future of the league. Last time Oregon State started 3-0 in this conference, it was the Pac-8. Now it's the Pac-10. Next year it will be the Pac-12. Now Pac-10 Commissioner Larry Scott joins us, and there are so many questions around this league, Commissioner Scott, but I think the one that, that has dominated the headlines in recent days and the vote upcoming among the presidents is the divisions. What do you anticipate? What can fans expect? when that final decision is made later this month about what the Pac-12 is going to look like. Well, as you mentioned, the conference hasn't had to go through this since 1978 when it became the Pac-10. I think what you're going to find is divisions that are competitively balanced, and hopefully that makes sense for fans. I mean, this is a conference that doesn't want to just be seen as relevant regionally, but we want to really build the following nationally. And I think having divisions that make sense and are easy for fans to follow how the season goes is important to us. Hey, Larry, in terms of future conference scheduling, how will that be handled and, and when will it be accomplished? Well, in terms, in terms of scheduling, we've already got a bunch of different models, depending on the outcome of our meeting with presidents and chancellors on Thursday, where we're looking at a couple of different scheduling models. I think we're about 30, 45 days away. Thank you. Pulls the tail back on first down with Locker under center. Larry, what have you learned about this conference 15 months on the job? Well, you know, when I got here, everyone talked about the amazing depth of the conference, but coming from the East Coast myself and, and, and all that, I realized that wasn't the national perception. So just being out here and just seeing how the conference beats itself up week in, week out, um, and to see how that now is starting to be appreciated nationally, where the conference is seen as one of the ones with the greatest depth is really, really gratifying, because I think there was a perception gap between the reality and how it was perceived, and I think that's starting to change. We talk about the league going from Pac-8 to Pac-10 to Pac-12. There are so many headlines about a Pac-16, Pac however many numbers we're going to be at the end of that. What is the goal of expanding the Pac-10 to the Pac-12 next year? Washington takes time out here. Yeah, it was an exciting offseason, and uh, we didn't know whether we were going to wind up 12 or 16. When I came on board, I identified expansion as something I thought we needed to look at to get on par with some of our peer conferences, to broaden the footprint beyond our four states, um, and we were really focused on 12. 16 became a possibility, and then it wasn't. So uh, we're settling down as a 12-team conference for now. We think that's what makes sense, and uh, we can't control what we don't control. And uh, we're about to negotiate very long-term TV agreements probably early next year. If there's some movement to super conferences down the road, I think we'll be well positioned in that conversation. How about the conference championship itself? Have you decided on a site or venue for that? Definitely not a site. Um, what I've been trying to frame is the strategic decision we have to take is are we going to go with an NFL playoff style um, on the campus of the team with the best conference record or are we going to go with a, a neutral site and in this conference in this part of the world we've got some great options we've had a lot of people express interest but I'm trying to keep the decision at a strategic level first and then if we're going with a neutral site we'll figure out how to bid it. Larry what's next step. 
Next step is we get the decisions um, out of our presidents and chancellors on Thursday. We release our schedules, and then we're very focused on our upcoming media agreements, the possibility of forming a Pac-12 network, uh, and then, of course, making integration work, having a successful uh, football championship game, integrating Colorado and Utah, then looking at our basketball championships and some other things. There's no shortage of things on our agenda right now. Well, Commissioner Scott, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. My pleasure, guys. That's packed in Commissioner Larry Scott and uh, quite a show, as uh, Commissioner Scott mentioned, the television factor. We're getting a good one here tonight. A 21-0 start for the Washington Huskies. Oregon State 21 straight. Now, these are proposed, and again, nothing is official until the university presidents meet later this week. These are the proposed divisions dividing north and south. And this is where some of the momentum is leaning. You've heard of a 6-6 vote, a 7-5 vote. All you know is when the presidents get together, Larry Scott's got a lot of work to do to get every it's a give and take for everybody revenue wise schedule wise division wise and next Thursday when those presidents get together we're going to know a whole lot more of what this Pac-12 will look like. Rogers pass complete to curse now Mike you were an athletic director at University of Oregon you, you've been through these types of meetings and discussions before what do you think about the, the way that the North South Division breaks up. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a brave new world. And the reality is the first thing everybody wants is revenue sharing because that's the most important thing to sustain athletic programs. But the second thing is equitable comp competition and opportunity to win the conference. And I'm sure some teams are not going to be happy, but I don't think there is a way that everybody would be happy with the way you would break it up. And what's the most important now? The Huskies get a third down to sustain this drive. Polk hit. Battling, fighting near the first down appears to be just short as Gabe Miller makes the stop. As the momentum has slipped away and is clearly in the corner of the Beavers, I think this is a situation now in a statement of Steve Sarkeesian and Doug Nussmeyer saying we need a physical element to our football team. Well, here's your chance on fourth and a half a yard. Huskies will go for it for the 12th time on fourth down this year, making Les Miles look conservative. And you talk about a sense of urgency for the program. It's in this down right here. Hole driven back. The Beavers hole. Brennan Olander breaks it up. And Stephen Paya gets a lot of credit, but it's 78. Brennan Olander, the two-time heavyweight state champion, driving that new center. Gray Christine, remember a guard a week ago. They make the move. They implement a true freshman on the right side. They move Christine to center, but he can't hold the point as Olander shows up and makes a play for the Beavers. Complete to Wheaton on the screen. Wheaton near another beaver first down with Nichols blocking for him on the edge one of the burdens on these outside linebackers is with all that zone up the middle and the cuts they're, you're trying to cheat you're trying to get that extra defender in the box not thinking you've got to cover the slot credit Oregon State for taking advantage of Victor Iowa trying to be in between not in the box out covering the receiver not in the box well you're not right as Oregon State continues to move the chains Wheaton has 15 catches on the year, 13 of those in the last two and a half weeks. Rodgers shows his sweet moves to the outside, and now he cuts it back to Quiz Rodgers inside the 10, still fighting, finally dragged out inside the five. And the best defender on the Washington defense was the sideline. Sweet. I think Big Brother likes this one. And look at the sticky offensive lineman right there. Burke Ellis on Victor Iowa. <laughs> and that is, I think, the epitome of change of direction. And Joe Halahuni getting three blocks on that same play. First and goal. Rodgers. This time wrapped up for a loss of a couple. That's only the ninth tackle for loss by the Washington defensive line this year. Give that one to Alameda Ta'amu. Incredible how durable 
quiz has been in his career in Oregon State as well. And you saw the graphic earlier of him climbing up the ranks. I don't know if he's going to get to number one, but his ability to punish at his sides, to deliver the blow, has aided his durability. Six yards in the first quarter, 99 cents for Rodgers. Play fair. Cats in trouble. Cats dropped. Jamora gets the sack. Huge play, and give the Washington defense credit right now for bowing their back, bracing their neck, and say, we're not going to let Oregon State get in the end zone. Very sound defensively, did not bite on the play fake. A very simple philosophy in the red zone to teach a quarterback. Touchdown to check down to throw the ball away. Don't take sacks. Third and goal. Same formation, three receivers to the field, quiz and a single receiver into the boundary. Cats looks for Rodgers. Now he tucks it and throws. Intercepted. The third interception of the night thrown by the sophomore QB who had only thrown one pick in five games before he came to Husky Stadium. And that's the true freshman, one of 14 that is playing right now for the University of Washington, Sean Parker. Excellent job defensively. It's a scramble drill. You've got to lock on to your defender, Sean Parker, the free man at safety. And, and again, throw the football away. Katz, who was so poised, he did throw an interception a week ago, but 393 passing yards. At Arizona, leading Oregon State to the win. The Beavers had only one turnover as a team coming into tonight. Is that pass incomplete on first down? Three picks. And this is a, a Husky defense that had only two interceptions all year before tonight. Now three. It looked as if Katz did not even see the safety. He was zoned in so much on the receiver beating the man covering him. He didn't see the free safety coming over. On the other hand, I'll tell you what, James Dockery has stepped it up here in the second half. Very tight coverage, knocked that ball away, responding to the challenge that was thrown to him in the first half. Locker completes to Jordan Polk. And what will likely be the last play of the third quarter. Well, Brock told us at the half it was a tale of two quarters. Huskies jumping out to an early 21-0 lead. Oregon State has scored 21 straight to even it at the end of the third. The question remains, who controls the four? Callier first down. Well, Last week it was a loss to Arizona State. The week before it was a close win against USC. Steve Sarkeesian said he was inspired. The Any Given Sunday speech from Al Pacino. Football like life is a game of inches. Now go fight for those inches. That's, that's what he told his football team. Here it is, another tight game, fourth quarter. They did it against USC. They didn't do it on this field a week ago against the Sun Devils. Breaks it for a first down to the 40. And, and no more if I'm advising Doug Nussmeyer and Steve Sarkees and running between the tackles. Olander, Paya, there's nothing to prove there. This is a game, in my opinion, in this fourth quarter, be it with Jake's legs or that outside run, I would utilize and continue to attack where you've had success outside the pocket tonight. Keep the ball on the edge where they've had that success. You also see a difference in the styles between Locker and Katz. Locker can throw the ball over a rushing blitzer to the lateral pass, whereas Katz has struggled tonight in that situation. Pressure coming again. Huskies pick it up. Locker to throw. Caught inside the 30. Goodwin makes the grab. You know, they talked about DeAndre Goodwin. They loved the way he practiced this year. They felt like he was going to step up today in the absence of Aguilar. Just a corner route there. You clear it out with the outside go route. Lots of man-to-man -man coverage. You see the quarter safety in that case. Tui Maune unable to undercut that corner. An excellent body control of Goodwin going down and digging that one out. 17 catches for Goodwin in the last three games.
Play action on first down. Locker avoids the pressure, but tripped from behind and dropped. Keith Pankey with the sack. Again, better than throwing it away late. Hang on to the football. You don't like to give up the yardage, but you don't want to turn the ball over down here. And that's Schaefer. It's amazing how wide these ends are playing tonight for Oregon State. It was the strategy that Arizona State employed a week ago. Before we take this next step, just look at the edge. Look at how wide Gabe Miller is a defensive end down here. Second long. Callier gets him back to third manageable. 21 nothing start for Washington. Now 21 straight from Oregon State. But the Huskies driving third and seven inside the Beaver 25. One on one coverage outside. No safety over the top. Long drop for Locker. Pressured and sacked again. And I think, unfortunately, they tried to keep the tight end in in protection. I think he got beat on the backside. Roberson gets the sack. See it right here. Yeah, the, the, the tight end stepped down inside like he thought he had help in the backfield, left Jake, and totally hung him out to dry. And you could see Jake's face there on the sack looking to his tight end. Chris is Vicky. Who are you blocking on that play? Fulton for 45. Washington did fake one last week. No good. Still tied at 21. 8.49 to go. Beaver ball. No points on the board for Washington. Oregon State gets it back. Play pick. Ryan Katz completing. First down for the Beavers. Not a lot of doubt on that throw. That was a bullet. That was a decisive moment. He put the ball on the money. Aaron Nichols makes the grab. One of the seven walk-ons or former walk-ons who start for Oregon State. Both teams with two timeouts now, which is going to be crucial. We're under the three-minute mark. Cats looking long. Another flag down. Wheaton couldn't make the catch. Williams fell down in the defensive backfield. But there is a flag down back near the quarterback, Ryan Katz. This is another Oregon State penalty. One of the things you're seeing right now is a response from the Husky defense. This is pressure time. This is time to cut it loose. They know they're going to get the ball down the field. On the offense, number 50, penalties declined. Down is two. And when these guys, these defensive linemen, can pin their ears back and come after you, it puts real pressure on the tackles. And that's the true freshman, Jamora, there. <laughs> Pretty obvious. Whoa, whoa, that was jerked off my feet. Since Jaquiz Rogers scored the touchdown to tie this game, it's been a pair of interceptions by the Husky defense and three straight punts. And now they have the Beavers backed up again. Quiz Rogers. Gets across the 30, but third and very long coming up for Oregon State. What, no, one of the things you have to think about right now is field position. Because, again, all you need is a field goal to win this game. So, do you try a long third down pass? Do you try to get yardage on the ground to make it, again, a longer field for Washington should they get the ball? And I think where they are real estate-wise, and still with a minute 45, this is the right call by Sarkeesian to save the timeouts. Ryan Katz on the draw to the 35. Foster makes the stop. Now well, you should be calling a timeout, as I, I believe Washington has, which is a great use of that. Because one of the things you want to do is not score too early and don't give the Beavers any time at the end. Timeout Huskies, one remaining. The 12th man down the road, up by five at Quest Field. He's in the ring of honor in that stadium. The Seahawks fans have embraced that role. They really feel as if they dictate the game and play an outcome in the game. And I'm here to tell you the 60 some thousand tonight have played a critical role in these passing situations to give this defensive line of the University of Washington advantage off the ball. Runs backed up to near the 10 minute 25. 
90 yards away from the end zone but the Huskies will take points any way they can get them. Will it be another legendary performance from Jake Locker. Play fake stepping up looking long. Incomplete on Goodwin's hands and he couldn't come up with it. Brandon Harden in coverage. What did Steve say to us yesterday inches. We just can't make those plays at the end. They didn't make them against Arizona State. I think this is inches. You see the double move. Goodwin's got a step and a half. Ball thrown perfectly. Short arms it. Yeah, it looked as if he lost the ball somehow. I think he lost his footing as he tried to slide and adjust to the ball. And again, very difficult. That's the toughest thing for a receiver when the ball's thrown through the outside shoulder. Can't throw that one any better. Washington led this game 21 nothing then gave up 21 straight a chance at a game winning drive here Chris Polk setting up third down with the clock ticking and Oregon State not taking a timeout here. Well there at Oregon State is actually a great field position because right now without the football I don't you they want the game, out. they want the game to run out because right now they feel like again that they're going to win in overtime. I disagree with that call when you've gotten a guy an opponent inside their own 20 yard line on a third down that has struggled as badly as Washington has here in the second half. I really think for special teams sake and otherwise and where you are on the field you've got to take that time out. Can Washington convert on third and four. Locker keeps it this time bounces outside first down and more and he steps out of bounds at the 35 stopping the clock with 24 seconds to go. And he had had he known that play was coming sure you you look wise to not call the timeout but I don't think you can play to well we could give up a big play I think you've got to set the mindset of I'm calling timeout and we're going to make the stop and get the football back. Mark it at the 36. Eric Folk already a game winning kick earlier this year two weeks ago against USC. Locker trying to give him a chance to beat Oregon State tonight. From the 36. Locker is going to tuck it and run again. This time drag down. I will tell you that both coaches right now are playing for overtime. Washington has a timeout. And now Sarkeesian takes it with 12 seconds. All right Mike 12 seconds you don't have any timeouts you're looking for a field goal opportunity here. What you're going to try to do is throw a pass a long pass to put yourself in field goal position get up and spike the ball long pass completed will stop the clock with the first down get up and spike the ball run your kicking team on the field and kick the winning field goal with no time left. Second and seven with an eye on the clock. The pump, the toss. Curse drops it. Ten seconds showing on the clock. Third down coming. Ten seconds is still enough time. Correct me if I'm wrong, coach. To get a 20-yard gain, the clock will stop with the first down and immediately spike it. Be very, very close with just 10 seconds. It will be very close because again, if if you throw the ball down the field enough to get into field goal range, and what should happen in this case is Oregon State should interfere or knock down receivers. They should not allow anything down the field because a penalty is only 15 yards for pass interference. Washington needs to at least get into the Beaver 40. Ending to Polk. Short of the first down, and guess what? Now, actually, I would call timeout if I were Oregon State, and I would try to block the punt. Oh, no. Game's In the over. regulation. <laughs> Game's over. Sorry, they didn't even get it. So, 21 straight to start for the Washington Huskies. Oregon State responds with 21 straight. And that doesn't determine it. So we are headed to overtime now between Oregon State and Washington. Brock, you said it. Oregon, I mean, overtime, you usually, that favors the home team. So Washington's the home team. How big of an advantage do you think that that home atmosphere is once we go to OT? You would think it would favor because of the noise we've heard tonight and the disruption it has made. Yet the way both of these offenses could not make plays in this fourth quarter, I really don't know if there's a clear momentum advantage one way or the other. Unlike professional football, no matter what happens here, Washington will get a chance. Chris Rogers inside the 20-yard line, so 
This is not a sudden victory situation. Each team will get one possession from the 25 yard line till the winner is decided. No game clock, no play clock. Each team has one timeout. I said no play clock, it's ticking down now. No game clock, second and five coming. Play clock's still a factor. Rodgers, cut back, room on the outside. Quiz Rodgers with the stiff arm to get to the 10. The jump cut, I, th I think that's the most apt description of what he does. He's moving full speed, and you'll see this again right here. Watch him now, takes it, goes to the outside, boom, and now he's off to the races. He's not finished yet, boom, cut back. I'm gonna let the guy tackle me. Got to take another guy. I'm gonna take the team with me into the end zone. And if the Huskies can somehow get a stop here, Put a little asterisk by Desmond Trufant and his ability in the open field to leverage the sideline and not give up the touchdown run. That's a season high 26 attempts for Chris Rogers. A 27, but no gain. You know, if, if this does come down to field goals, Justin Kehu, by his own coach's admission, is in a slump mentally and he's just not making great contact but they didn't practice him more they didn't make him kick a lot they actually said just relax take do a couple things focus on striking the ball well Kehu missed a 25 yard chip shot at Boise last week missed two PATs Rodgers again Quiz slips near the 10 so third down coming in Oregon State doing exactly what I what I would have done if I'm an offensive coordinator. Jaquiz Rogers is my best player. My young quarterbacks turned the ball over three times tonight. Give some real credit to this University of Washington run defense. One yard on those first two run plays of this possession. on third down to Rodgers is he in yes touchdown Oregon State catch to Jaquiz Rodgers we talked about it. I don't think people understand how good a receiver he is he doesn't have great range because of his size but he has great hands and the ability to make the catch and this ball is zipped in there it is a Hummer you see it boom I mean it's right there he catches it and again gets into the end zone and the coaching point is when Mason Foster has his back to you a linebacker is showing you his numbers that savvy play of a quarterback and a running back being on the same page you throw that back shoulder he can't stop it K. Hoot missed two point after touchdown kicks a week ago. This one's good. And Washington will have to score a touchdown in the bottom of the first overtime. Pressure, sense of urgency, it all comes together right here in overtime. You called this out earlier. Oregon State loves to get in a three, get the trips away from Jaquiz Rogers. Leave him all of that turf so he can be a playmaker. They get into this three trip set, leaving him in a one on one on the linebacker. Really well designed, well conceived. And as I said, the play is really quarterback, running back being on the same page and the ability to throw a back shoulder wheel route to a 5 7 running back. 28 straight now for Oregon State. Washington needs a touchdown now. Locker rolling, throwing. Complete on the sideline to DeAndre Goodwin inbounds and remember this is all four down territory now for Oregon State They have to score a touchdown For the Huskies Excuse me for the Huskies. Yes <laughs> For both te for both teams recognize it's four down territory It was 21 straight to start for Washington now 28 straight for Oregon State to take the overtime lead Fly sweep, handoff, Jordan Polk stops short of the first down. And he, here comes third. But as you said, four down territory, Huskies need to get in the end zone. They do, so again, it's, it's interesting too. Jordan Polk is one of the fastest Huskies. Again, not very tall, uh, but he makes, he gets a lot of pressure on the edge on that fly sweep.
third and two. Walker to throw on third and two. It is caught for a Husky touchdown. Curse makes the grab. How about the play call on third and two? How about shaking off the doldrums for Jermaine Curse and making a big catch? Great throw under pressure by Jake Locker, but again, sticky hands, made the catch, controlled the ball into the end zone. PAT is good. We're headed for a second overtime. The college football day is not done. How about Steven Paya, by the way? Wondering where he's been. One of our impact players tonight. He destroys Greg Christine and is right in the face of Jake Locker. That's not easy to do when a 310-pound man is breathing right down your neck to stand strong in that pocket to deliver that seam throw. Big-time play from number 10. And we said that Paya tends to get better as the game goes on. He gains strength and power. Again, as people get tired, he can push the pile. High backfield on first down and short. Holt straight ahead behind the block from Sylvester. Still fighting, leaning. Inside the 15, Huskies will get a new set of downs. And, and that's going to put Polk over 100 yards, and that's all Chris Polk. That's yards after contact, all the praise for Jaquiz Rogers. And Polk may not be five foot six, but the same kind of leg drive and effort went over the 100 yard mark for the third time this season. First and 10 inside the 15. This time it's Jesse Callier, the true freshman tailback, picking up four more. And is it because of those really wide ends, Coach, that Jake is not pulling the ball in any of those read zone opportunities? Yeah, and I think they're very content right now to probe that interior, just to continue to pound it at the middle of that line. And I think one of the things, they want to make a statement about, we talked about that physical presence at the line of scrimmage. So second down and 17. Locker from the deep shotgun, pressured again. Release for Curse. Got it! Locker to Curse again, and a redemption game for Jermaine Curse. After the drops last week, helped Arizona State beat the Huskies on this field. Back-to-back -back drives, Jake has stood right in the center of that pocket and felt the pressure coming and throwing an accurate ball down the field. Eric Fultz, PAT, makes this a seven-point Washington lead. You're going to see Curse leverage-wise at the advantage. Just that one little step freezes Brandon Harden, and that's a quarterback and his receiver, his go-to receiver, Mike, being once again on the same page. Great throw, and again, you love that route down there because, again, if the in corner takes the inside position, all you have to do is put that ball up over the top. Jake did a great job, and again, Jermaine Kirsch coming through big time. You love being on that hash. One of the distinct differences between this game and the pro game, when you're on that hash and have that whole field to work with, gives you a lot of margin for air on that throw. Put air on it, let your guy go get it and make a play. Five touchdown passes for Jake Locker tonight, four of them to Jermaine Kirsch. Oregon State football now from the 25. With Husky Stadium shaking. You gotta maintain your patience offensively if you're Oregon State. Jaquiz Rogers, Mason Foster waiting for him, gain of only two. The Huskies talked about needing to win first down, and there's no more important time than right now when you're up by a touchdown in overtime. Bottom of the second overtime, both teams touchdowns. 
That's well played, isn't it? That's like guarding the guy in basketball, almost looking at the belt buckle. Don't be deceived by his feet. Don't buy into his jump stops. Be confident in your tackling abilities. Well done, Mason Foster. On second and eight. Cats. Rolls. Sack. Behind the 30. Jamora gets the sack. Jamora probably their best pass rusher all he does is start. The real interesting thing here is to see if Oregon State goes for the whole bunch or just gets to a manageable fourth down situation. Catch pass caught. First down, Beavers inside the 15. Jordan Bishop hauls it in. Jordan Bishop is an athlete. He's a track guy. He can leap. He can track the ball. And this is a very, very nice pass thrown into that dead zone that both teams talked about wanting to exploit behind the linebackers. First down, Beavers. Rodgers running right. Tries the cutback. It's Foster there again. Minimal gain. How much emotion does this crowd have? We're going to find out because it keeps getting tested here tonight. A critical game for Washington's bowl chances. Oregon State trying to go to 3 0 in conference play for the first time since 1968. Jaquiz Rogers is dropped for a loss. Victor Ayewa on the stop. Third down coming. And if you remember back to the USC game, it was Victor Ayewa down the stretch. His two tackles for loss in the run game. USC did not make the plays on third down. He saw Katz just make, and he's the aggressor. I'm not going to hesitate. I'm not going to wait for this little guy to make me look silly again. I'm going to attack him. And remember, they're four down territory, but Oregon State can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Pat's throwing on third down, converting again. It's Wheaton who makes the grab right near the sticks. But from this spot, Wheaton appears to be just short. Talked about Jake Locker standing strong in the pocket. The Huskies run a loop. You got Everett Thompson breathing right down your neck. How about the finish? The arm finishes right into the D lineman. Sets up a critical fourth and one. Play fake. Cats to the end zone. Incomplete. No flags. Flag. Here it comes. On the end, a late flag. On the end in Washington with the Huskies ready to celebrate. Pass interference on the defense. First down, Oregon State. Again, they went with a play action pass down here. You see it toss the ball up over the top. Hard to tell if the contact occurred. It was mutual contact. See right there. No, absolutely got the arm around him. They're going to call that. The flag got him out late to the frustration of the Husky fans. Very late flag giving the Beavers another opportunity. Oregon State needs a touchdown. Jaquiz Rogers gets it for him. You talked about on the special teams play, Coach, when that defender, that blocker, puts his arms up in the air. It's almost a sign to that referee it's a penalty. When those referees see that arm, that arm of Trufant wrapped around the waist, it almost forces those referees to throw that flag regardless of how much contact is there. Give Oregon State and Mike Riley and the staff credit that that was an all or nothing thing. That was just one receiver, play action, throw the ball, hope he gets it. Beavers going for two and the win. Once again, this is for the game.
Rodgers lined up in the slot. Huskies win. What a game. For the second time in three weeks, the University of Washington Huskies win on the final play. And the mutual admiration, you could sense it there between the two head coaches. Jake Walker delivers in overtime, delivers in overtime, in inches, in a game of inches. Court Dennison making the play there, really. He just gets a chance to knock the ball out. Alahuni, their leading receiver, most touchdown receptions on the team, and the clutch guy, one of the impact players, cannot hang on to the football. Court Dennis, the leader of that Husky defense. And you could see Katz doing the best he could to stare down Dennison to give him a little bit more room in that window to fit it in. And what a hard fought game. Larry Scott, you made a good decision to be at this one tonight. Steve Sarkeesian. Last thing he told us yesterday. I don't know what the end result will be, but we're going to fight this week. Huskies win in double overtime, 35-34 over Oregon State. Up next, it's Sports Center for Brock Hewitt, Mike Milotti, and on our entire crew, I'm Carter Blackburn. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.